coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Biden administration FAA appointees fail to impress. Smoke inundates U.S. northeastern states. FAA publishes powered lift proposed rule. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lake. Let's get into today's stories. Biden administration FAA appointees failed to impress. DOT Deputy Secretary Polly Trottenberg has been selected to serve as acting FAA Administrator, replacing the eminently qualified Billy Nolan, who announced his intention to step down earlier this year. Catherine or Katie Thompson will serve as the FAA's Deputy Administrator, replacing Brad Mims, who is assuming a new senior role at the DOT as head of the agency's Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization. The announcements come as Congress considers 2023's FAA reauthorization bill amidst a historic restructuring of the agency's priorities in the face of the imminent advent of a host of new technologies, aircraft, and air transport conventions. Trottenberg has served for more than two decades in a public sector career that included numerous positions at various levels of government. She served from 2014 to 2020 as Transportation Commissioner for New York City. Trottenberg served in the Obama administration as Assistant Secretary and Undersecretary for Policy at the DOT, overseeing a portfolio that included roads, railways, and aviation. That she has no direct aviation experience is worrisome. Thompson, similarly, has no first-hand aviation industry experience. A lawyer by training, she has served as FAA Chief of Staff, DOT General Counsel, and FAA Chief Counsel during the Obama administration. In her role at the DOT, Thompson served as Director of Bipartisan Infrastructure Law Implementation. And coming up after the break, NBAA welcomes introduction of FAA Reauthorization Bill. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Unbridled passion, unequaled performance, unlimited possibilities. Hartzell Aviation, you are cleared for takeoff. Introducing Hartzell Aviation, leading general aviation companies united by the Hartzell guiding principle of built on honor. A commitment to uphold the highest standards in quality, performance, and support. Hartzell Propeller, Hartzell Engine Tech, Hartzell Aerospace Welding. We are Hartzell Aviation. Now boarding at HartzellAviation.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. NBAA welcomes introduction of FAA reauthorization bill. NBAA has welcomed the introduction of a bipartisan measure to reauthorize, which is to say refund and retask, the FAA through 2028. The bill includes provisions supported by the NBAA and the broader GA community. NBAA President and CEO Ed Bolin remarked, quote, this five-year FAA reauthorization package will strengthen America's global leadership as the gold standard in aviation. It addresses critical areas across our industry, from growing and diversifying the workforce to modernizing FAA processes and improving critical infrastructure for airports of all sizes, while also recognizing and prioritizing the GA community." End quote. Boeing begins B-52 upgrades. Boeing has received the first aircraft for modification under the Radar Modernization Program. The RMP project will provide B-52 pilots with more fighter-like radar capabilities, granting the aged bomber a level of navigation accuracy, targeting and tracking seen in aircraft half, a third or even a fifth of its age. The improved radar suite will serve multiple functions with high-resolution mapping and terrain analysis enhancing flight safety for every flight going forward. The change will, of course, also enhance targeting capability, allowing B-52s to engage multiple targets simultaneously. USAF Review looks to mitigate pilot shortage. The Air Force has implemented a new review process by which Pentagon Brass hopes to reverse the service's long-standing shortage of qualified fighter pilots. USAF Deputy Chief of Staff for Operations Lt. Gen. Jim Slife is reportedly endeavoring to determine whether the service needs hundreds more pilots to fill policymaking and managerial jobs, or if airmen of different backgrounds might substitute. 
The review could well reshape the wielding of influence among Air Force planners and policymakers, shifting power from the eminently capable to bureaucrats. Qantas to gradually retire A380 fleet. Incoming Qantas CEO Vanessa Hudson set forth the 10 Airbus A380 Super Jumbo airliners currently operated by the Australian flag carrier stand to be retired over the coming decade. Qantas is investing heavily in fuel-efficient twin-engine widebodies such as Boeing 787-9 and Airbus's A350-1000. On June 3, 2023, the airline took delivery of its 13th 787-9, the second new airframe accepted by the carrier in the post-COVID epic. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Smoke inundates U.S. northeastern states. Over summers past, smoke born of wildfires up Canada Way has passed largely unnoticed over the U.S., primarily by virtue of its high altitude. Not so in 2023. In the first week of June, low visibility instantiated by smoke from wildfires in the Canadian province of Quebec occasioned flight delays, cancellations, and ground stops at New York's LaGuardia and Kennedy International Airports, as well as New Jersey's Newark Airport. In addition to wreaking havoc on the orderly flow of air traffic along America's eastern seaboard, the smoke degraded the quality of surface air breathed by tens of millions of New England residents. Winds typically impel smoke from fires in Quebec, Newfoundland, and Labrador eastward over the North Atlantic. However, in June 2023, a persistent coastal low centered near Canada's Prince Edward Island instead forced smoke south into the United States. Smoke currently reaching the northeastern U.S. from Canada has raised the concentration of fine particulate matter suspended in the air to upwards of 400 micrograms per cubic meter, the highest ever recording since routine measurements began in 1999. And after these messages, FAA publishes Powered Lift Proposed Rule. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit flyskyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. FAA publishes Powered Lift Proposed Rule. The FAA has published a preview of its long-awaited Special Federal Aviation Regulation Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, addressing operational and airman qualification requirements for powered lift aircraft. Subject rulemaking, which the FAA called, quote, a key step towards safely enabling advanced air mobility, end quote, is salient to the industry-wide launch of electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. In the proposed rules preamble, the FAA explains the rulemaking is necessary in so much as existing regulations failed to anticipate the design diversity of the powered lift aircraft soon to be undergoing FAA's type certification process. The agency maintains the extent aeronautical experience requirements for powered lift aircraft are inconsistent with the effective and efficient training and certificating of the initial cadre of powered lift flight instructors and pilots. Furthermore, the regulations for certain commercial operations under Part 135 lack specific language addressing qualifications for powered lift pilots. Considered against the Part 135 requirements for pilots of airplanes and helicopters, the omission occasions a safety gap. In addition to airmen qualifications, the proposed rule addresses several operational subparts, thereby allowing for powered lift operations under Parts 91, 135, and 136 commercial air tours and national parks air tour management. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.